All right, so in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do something that I can only probably describe by just demonstrating it. So basically we have this data and we're running our query statement on top of that data. And the whole idea of this is gonna be that we have these checkboxes on top of this data. And by checking the box, we're gonna display that column as one of the results columns. And if we wanna remove it from these results, we simply just go back and uncheck the checkbox. And if I go back and you'll see it's gone. So basically I can go back here and check any columns I want. So let's say I uncheck all of these and I'm just gonna check gender and I'll check vehicle and domain, those three columns. So if I go back to results, you'll see that's gonna display those three columns in the statement. And again, you can go back and change to any other columns from this list and they automatically are going to populate in here. And I have this extra space here, which is technically not necessary, but that's pretty much what we're gonna do in this video. So let's get right to it. So this is gonna be our data to start with. So let's just add a row here and make sure we have some check boxes here. So I'm just gonna highlight on top of all of these columns, go to data, data validation, check box, reject any other input, hit save. So far that should give us our checkboxes. So that's really all I need here, but to explain what I'm gonna be doing, I'm gonna add some space on top for now. And then we'll go ahead and delete these rows once we're done. So let's say we're checking some of these boxes. So these would be the columns we would need to target. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna first start by using this function called column. And what I'm gonna do in here, I'm gonna use an array formula and instead of selecting a single cell, so if I just select the single C gender cell, that gives us one because it's the first column. But instead, I'm just gonna actually select this range of column labels from here up to here. Close parentheses, and then I'm gonna do Control Shift Enter or Command Shift Enter to basically make this array formula, hit Enter. And what you should see happens, well, we have all of this formatting problems, but let's just change this to something else. So now what we have is numbers. See, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, if your data didn't start in the first column and it was like this, this would start from two. So you would have to account for that. As a matter of fact, let me actually clean this up and do it that way. So now this should be the first column. So what I would do in this case, I would just go in here and do minus one to account for that. So see, it goes one. Or what you could do also, you could just say minus column and then click in this first cell for gender. And that should give us basically two for this cell which means now I'm gonna get zero, one, two, three. But now what I can do, I can get back to this formula and I can just add one to this. And now I'll get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the difference between this and the other one is that for this one, you can actually go back and keep adding new columns or you can delete columns and you'll see that it will stay one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, because now it's more dynamic. So at this point, we just have this sequence of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, these numbers. 
So out of these numbers, basically, we need to just have the ones that are checked. Those would be the columns. So if this is checked, this would be column number three. That's one of the columns we need. If this is checked, that should be column number five and so on. So what I could do here, I could do an if function. And in this if function, I'm gonna do a logical test. And basically I wanna check if this is checked. So I can just highlight this area of checkboxes on top. So if that equals to true, basically, comma, then I want to actually have those column numbers displayed. So I'll just highlight these numbers that I just created using the other formula, just like that, comma. Otherwise, I'm just gonna leave it blank by doing double quotes like this. So this equals true is not necessary here because these values are already trues and falses in this checkboxes. So instead of doing this equal true, we can just skip doing equal true because what's gonna happen, it's gonna give us this trues and falses right here because of our checkboxes. So what I'll do now, I'll just convert this to an array function with control shift enter or command shift enter. Here we go, hit enter. What you're gonna see is that because there's a checkbox here, this three shows up. And if I go ahead and check this box, well, probably wasn't the best column to choose from because of the formatting. Let's actually do one of, well, this one. See, two. Uncheck it, this is gone. Check it, it's back. So that's what I got so far. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna combine all these formulas together to a single formula. So here, what I'll do, I'll just replace this with whatever I have in here. So I'll just copy this middle part without array formula, hit escape, go back to this formula and replace this range right here with that other formula that's gonna give me that same sequence of numbers basically. So if I hit enter, I can now delete this and this should just work on its own and see if I check the box, it just gives us the column number, otherwise it doesn't. So that's what we got. So what I'm gonna add to this, instead of just saying three, five, seven, I'm gonna change it to COL three, COL five, COL seven, which is column three, column five, column seven. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go back to this formula right here. And this is the formula that creates that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna add some spaces here just to make this clear. They're not necessary. And what I'll do, I'll just take this whole thing and put this in parentheses to group it together. And then I'll concatenate it with that word COL in front with an ampersand, just like this. So if I hit enter right now, you'll see that now it's gonna be COL3, COL5. And if I check this box, it should give us that column two. So there we go. Now we got the columns. So what I need at this point is something that's gonna basically join them with a comma in between all of these columns. This is where I can use something like text join. And the reason I'm using text join is because text join has this option to ignore empty, which is gonna be very useful in this case. So my delimiter is gonna be a comma. I'll actually do a comma and a space, then do a comma and then ignore empty. I'm gonna say true. Actually, let's just say false, so you can see the difference, right? So I'm gonna say false, comma, and then the text. So the text is gonna be basically this range right in here. Again, I have to match the original range of the formula. So starting from here, I'm gonna go up to here, close parentheses and hit enter. And you'll see now I got all this comma separated columns but there's also all these blanks in the middle because of these blanks. What I can do, I can go back to that same text join formula right here and change this false to true. And what's gonna happen now, see, it's gonna ignore those blanks and we're gonna get a nice comma separated list of columns, just like that. Let's actually just cut and paste it here so it's kind of matching. So now I'm gonna again convert this to one single 
formula. So instead of doing this range in here, I'll just go inside of this other function, take this whole thing, copy it without the equal sign, hit escape, go back and replace this range with that array formula that gives me what I need. I'm also gonna remove these extra spaces because I don't need those anymore. And then I can delete this one because this is gonna work by itself. So now if I check this box, see it gives me the next column if I check this box. So it's just gonna add that column to that list of columns. If I uncheck them, they're just gonna disappear. So what I need at this point is to add a select statement in front of this whole thing. So I'll just go in here and before this whole text join, I'll just do in quotation select. I'm gonna need a space and then ampersand to join this text join operation next to it. So now I got this formula that gives me, see that select with this text join with this entire thing in a single piece. So now that I got this working, I'm gonna create a new worksheet. I'm gonna call this results, I guess. And what I'll do, I'll just do cut for this formula. So control X or command X, go to my results and do control V or command V. So I'm just basically moving it here. The only difference in my formula is gonna be that now my ranges are referring to this other worksheet text instead of the same worksheet. So what I can do now, I can go back and delete all of these columns on top and just have my checkboxes. And there's my formula that gives me this. So now this should be useful in our query function. So we'll just go ahead and add our function right here. And I'll go back and select my data. So again, that's gonna be just a regular range of data from here up to, let's say here, I'm gonna drop the nth reference, so we need to make sure this data range matches the column range we did before, comma. Then I need some sort of select statement, so for now I'm just gonna do double quotes, comma, and then the number of header rows is just gonna be one, this first row. I did not select checkboxes as a part of this. So that just gives me everything because this doesn't do anything. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna select this formula, copy it without the equal sign, go back to this and replace this with my formula right there. And you can see I get a value error. And the reason for that is because this column syntax works with arrays and this is a range. So to convert that to an array, we'll just take that and put it in curly brackets like this, hit enter, and here we go. We got the columns that we selected from the other tab. So at this point, I can go back and let's say I don't like to have this, this. I'm gonna uncheck a few of these and let's say we want the first name, the last name, the state, and credit card type. So at this point, if I go back, see, that's what I got because that's what I checked here. If I just go ahead and click on city, I go back, city is one of these two. And then we can go to our statement and continue it and make it more interesting. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna move this to a new line. I'm gonna press Alt Enter or Option Enter to just separate this to a new line and also this one too, Alt Enter or Option Enter. This is not necessary, but I guess it just keeps this a little cleaner so we can see what we're doing. So this line now is gonna be my select statement. So if I wanted to join something to this, I could say another ampersand and then in quotes, I could add some filter. So I could say where column I'm not sure, we'll have to see which column we wanna do. Let's say we want to filter by this credit card type. 
So that's going to be column number 11, apparently. So we'll go back and say where call 11 equals to, in single quotes, master card. So that should filter all of these to master card because of that statement right here. And maybe we don't want to see that column anymore. So we'll go back and uncheck this box. That should still filter to that card type, but we don't have to look at it basically. And we can decide which columns we need to look at. And there it is. And that should do it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.